Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas. People, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host, Dennis Simpson, as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village, the award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007 or find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. With yet another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out, it's myself and Mr. Jeff Harrington. Jeff, how are you today, buddy? I'm doing great, Dennis. I tell you what, what, so I, I thought when the price of lumber got high enough, people would just stop buying stuff altogether, right? No, no, no. You, uh, you flood enough stimulus and enough money in the economy. <laughs> people will spend anything to get their job done. So <laughs> well, we're going to talk about a, gr- a big get together. You guys have coming up. That sounds exciting. I really do. I'm excited about this. This is awesome. And, and the reason I bring that up is because before we do that, we're going to do a hardware update or a. I don't know. A hardware update's not even the term. What would just a building supply? Is that fair enough? Fair enough. So, well, tell me well, what's what's going on in the builders' world. Well, I think on the good front is lumber prices are way way down from this time last year. So, I mean, you know, I laugh. Last year, you know, price of lumber was so high, I didn't want to do any building projects, and I own a lumber yard. So. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> and, give us uh, give us a real ballpark. I mean, what what do you mean? Is it down twenty well, percent? Is it down forty percent? Oh no, no, it's it's more than that. And uh, really, oh yeah, I mean, you know, it got as high as you know what was it, sixteen hundred a thousand board feet for rail lumber, and I think what is probably I don't know five five fifty right now. I mean, it's it's dramatically down from last. Really, I mean, and and actually, what's really come down, which a lot of people, I mean, OSB and plywood and those kind of things uh, are are way down, and and I certainly see that because. I may have bought that wood when prices and the commodity was higher and it's a commodity. So, uh, I uh, move it out the door, move it out the door and take the beating and just smile and, and keep on uh, moving. So, uh, what, what, uh, and let's go back for just a second. Let's do the five mile high view and the super close up view. OSB is oriented strand board and it looks like it has just big flakes of stuff stuck in it. Yeah. It, a lot of people it, call it chipboard. Or, chipboard. Yeah. I was going to say, it looks so. like it's chipped up board. And that's a lot of times what they'll, they'll finish out outside of a house with or something yeah. like that yeah they'll and, sheath they'll sheath houses in that and then right 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 and then the plywood it. itself is like that's the fundamental of flooring and everything else right you bet so okay uh, and and although and I, I appreciate how you refer to those prices because it's not like a two before is this price but it's across the board right it has been yeah it's it's, it's definitely for the most part across uh you know, probably a lot of times that's the case with the, with the lumber pricing is, you know, uh, it'll go that way. Lumber in general, will do certain things within certain commodity, you know, items within that, uh, mm-hmm. will be higher or lower, just according to how manufacturing is going by what demand is. And I mean, there's still issues and, you know, trying to get certain items, just, uh, manufacturing still hasn't caught up. I mean, there's certain kinds of, uh, like melamine shelving or, uh, certain types of trim. Um, that are just really hard to get. So people are looking for baseboards and a certain kind, and, and they may not be getting it or maybe waiting a whole long time if they want to match. So there's so, just a whole lot of supply chain issues still as well. Th- there mean. still is. And, and, you know, a lot of it is, you know, manufacturing is getting there, but the ports aren't keeping up with what's going on. And I mean, there's just all sorts of things that, you know, the pandemic and the response to the pandemic and how we've handled things has, uh, you know, uh, dominoed through the uh, supply chain and caused problems. And we're at the end of it, you know, of that supply chain. I mean, I used to have about 100, 150 outs we would scan every week when we would scan our outs in the store. And, and uh, you know, we're, uh, 
you know, we're at a couple thousand right now. So it's, really? it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot different than it was. So, so we, we had no idea how good we had it, did we? Yeah, no, things were running pretty smoothly. And so now it's a lot more work for everybody. Uh, you know, think of your contractors. They're trying to get a job done. They're waiting on a part. We can't get it for them or somebody else can't get it for them. The person may be holding up payment till it's absolutely done. So they might have 95% of a project done and all their money out. And I'm trying to get paid by the contractor, you know, and he's waiting to get money from the homeowner or whoever he's doing the project for. And so it, it ripples both ways. So, so is, or I, I heard there was a huge problem with appliances. Are we about to get past that? Or are we still in that too? You know, I'm not sure. I, I think we're, we're in it for a while. And I think the only thing that unfortunately cleans this mess up my take and and i don't want to be doom and gloom but you know uh, business cycles need to have uh, recessions to clean house and get things in order and reset and uh, so i think you know the consensus is we're going to have one if we're not already technically in one and it's just a matter of how deep and how long and mm -hmm. you know and i look at 1981 and you know back in the day and i was a young college student but uh, you know you know, inflation was high, interest rates were high, and it took a recession to clean that mess up. And that was a deep, hard one for two years. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll see what ends up happening. But uh, I think we've done a, a lot of things even more extreme than were done back in those days. And to clean it, it might be more extreme to get it cleared and clean. We'll see. Could, could take that. It could take that. So are you seeing... Get you know, just one last question here with the hardware stuff. Are you seeing basically uh supply chain issues or is there also inflationary issues i mean on, oh well the, definitely inflationary issues that all businesses are struggling with so well, luckily it's only transitory remember yeah oh yeah yeah well <laughs> you know but somebody's got to finance that inflation so if i had a inventory that was worth you know a million two or three last year and it's now for the same stuff to have the same things for people to buy and and the same set it's a million five, a million six sitting in my store. Okay, well, that's $300,000 more I've got to come up with to finance that. And, uh, you know, I may, you know, even if I make a couple hundred thousand dollars in uh, my business and uh, taxes take 30%, I got maybe 140. And if I put every dime to that, it only covers half of that. Wow. So, so then you got to go look, how do I finance it? How do I go get, you know, business loan or whatever to keep up? And, you know, when, when it's only, a, you know, you know, interest rates are real low, great, but they've gone up, you know, uh, 1.75. And I, I know they're supposed to be, if they didn't already do it, another 0.75. So that's two and a half points in the last, you know, three months, uh, raising rates. So I, and, and I've got it probably better than a lot of folks have it, but that's what folks are dealing with and business owners are dealing with. Well, and, and I think one of the things that we miss, and, and there was an article in uh, uh, for a uh, fortune, this last week that they talked about how the interest rates for, for homes, for the home buyer uh, in, in uh, just Southern California, general Southern California had gone from 3.35 to basically 5.5. Yep. And they were saying that the average home, you'll get a joke out of this with the average home, you know, $900,000 home. Yeah. Pa pause for, in, for emphasis here. Yeah. Uh, but the, oh, the yeah. average $900,000 home, that that would be another $1,600 a month. Well, it, yeah. it doesn't matter how, how good you are at math or not. That $1,600 a month on top of what your bill, what your monthly rent would have already be, um, boy, that, that, wow. that's, that's a whop now, right? Well, yeah. And if you figure that's probably... If it's you have a certain payment you can afford, now suddenly you can afford two hundred thousand less on a house because yeah. you got to make up for what the interest rates are going to be, and so that's yeah. going to drive prices down on homes. So you know that's you know there was maybe a bubble by the super low interest rates and all that stimulus money coming in, and somewhere that's got to get cleansed. And we last one bad was nine and ten, and yeah. uh, so uh, you don't do, you don't know what the floor looks like till you've seen the ceiling, right? <laughs> Yeah. One of my so, favorite quotes and, and Jeff yeah. and I, Jeff, Jeff uh, uh, Atkins, my business partner that I joke and I about this all the time. One of my favorite quotes of all time is, uh, uh, oh, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett. 
Yeah. He, sa he says, you never know who's swimming naked till the tide goes out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then, then it's a, it's a little too uncomfortable, you know? Well, speaking of that, you, and, and let me back up just for a sec, Jeff, you guys are honestly just wonderful contributors to the community. The things you've done, you had the cookout with Tracy Simpson, not related in any way, but uh, to tell us what that was like. That sounded like a big blowout. I was in Spain and wasn't able to be here, but tell me. Yeah. Well, it all kind of started, I had hoped to be building a enclosed garden center mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, went out last year knowing when I saw all the people in my store spending the stimulus money that only one thing was going to come from that, and that has happened, that inflation. And uh, so I worked on getting this place refinanced so that I would have low rates you know, for a longer time anyway. Yeah. And hopefully the cycle will go through itself and be back down by the time I have to do it again, uh, which is every five years. <laughs> and, uh, but in that I was trying to add a construction project to do that. Well, we kind of guesstimated one thing in May, by the time I got approval in September, construction and, you know, costs had just gone up so dramatically that I was going to need a second loan. So oh, mercy. I ended up doing a roofing project uh, that needed to be done for this place. And I'm actually getting ready to put solar on the building. Are you now? And yeah, we're going to be uh, uh, um, have solar. We face great direction and we're clear enough where we can get good solar and, uh, you know, with uh, the federal tax credits and uh, all of those giveaways. Uh, it would have been crazy for me not to do it. Well, but let, let's let's talk about that just for a where in the village, let's just be frank, unless you've cut out 20 acres like the 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 uh, the shopping center there, you right. don't get light to the ground very often because there's so many trees and so much overgrowth and all that. So for a place like you and you get tons of solar radiation, tons. I do. We face directly south. Exactly. Which you end up paying for in heating and cooling costs and to being able to turn that into a highly effective, I suspect, a solar farm or a small farm like that. And, and no, no, it, it, I see twofold. Number one, it would nearly be worth it just for the shade. <laughs> so, right. So that your HVC bills would be lower, but at the same time, it offsets the cost, which is fabulous, well, man. And the new roof we put on went over our metal roof and it's a, mem a membrane roof yeah. with insulation and then a white PVC covering to all of it. Oh, cool. And uh, so that alone, which just got finished uh, last week, um, has really helped us keep you know, the place cooler than normal. And, uh, and then with this, with the solar um, project, uh, you know, we'll, it, it, what ends up happening is my whole new mortgage with all this roof and that and added with what my old mortgage and the uh, um, electric costs, it's a wash. The nice really? thing is that my electric costs won't be going up. Yeah, ever, <laughs> and, ever. and we see where energy, you know, you know, uh, costs are going, and unless there's a change in policy, um, and that isn't at least happen till twenty four or later, mm -hmm. um, the uh, um, trying to protect the business and make sure I'm a good steward of this business. As long as I'm a good steward of this business and for the community, I know that uh, in the end, I and uh, my family will be rewarded for it. Well, it sounds like to me also, and, and, and truly, the, those of you who don't, don't know Jeff, this is truly his heart. This is not just a, a, a line you use. I know that but by heart and by my friendship with you. I was going to say one of the things that people don't understand for, and let's face it, small business owners, small local. I'm Jeff. I'm local, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah but for small local business owners, nobody comes by and goes, boy, that is a great looking membrane you've spent tens of thousands of dollars on, on the top of that roof. You know, it's right. a hidden cost that you really will never, never get a, a street curb appeal. You know, you, you remodel the kitchen, the, the garden center and turn that into something. People go, Ooh, ooh ah, that's different. You put a membrane on top of the building. People don't come by and go whew, whew, sexy looking membrane, Jeff. Right. <laughs> well, but I, I will say the, uh, like with the, um, you know, with the, uh, tax credits for the solar not only the i i had had solar in my home in california it made sense electricity is two or three times the cost it is here and sure. and and with the sun all the time where i was at in san diego it, it certainly penciled out to put in solar on my home there 
Um, here, I didn't really think it did, but uh, the USDA had some extra grant money. Who and knew, we're in, right? And we're, and we're technically in a rural area, so yeah, very much that that was kind of what finally made it where it actually penciled out. And I go, okay, this this makes sense. So yeah, wow. So a, a well, good solar business came and you know was able to show me that so well congratulations i'm eager to see that i really am and you know the nerd that i am i'm going to want to see the dials and the switches and all the hardware sure. at the back end so we'll have to come do a trip on that yeah. uh, let's go back to uh we, we talked about the barbecue event that i thought yeah was a let me great event. yeah the barbecue event the barbecue event um well, we had thought when we were going to have a grand opening for a new garden center, we would do some sort of big event. So that's where the festival thing came in. Right, right, right. And actually, um, the barbecue ended up being kind of a test case for doing a bigger festival. And that's How why did that we, work. We did it. That, that barbecue got, went way beyond expectation in really? terms of the community coming out for it and just a fun day with lots of good music. And, you know, there was, you know, 40 plus uh you know vendors all from the local community here showing off what they do and how they do it and and uh, just a, a thing to give something for folks to do on a saturday and enjoy themselves and have a lot of fun and it, it turned out great and it turned out great despite the fact that we had a storm come and look like right towards us we had to shut in you know early a, a couple hours and all but during the time we were we were open for that five six hours I got nothing but great comments on how it turned out, how much fun it was for the folks and, uh, and, and, and was really glad we had gone ahead and decided to do it. Now I'm going to skip ahead here just for a moment, because we know what's coming up. You and I do, yeah. obviously you got an event scheduled for September when it cools off a little more like this, but you, you've got an event scheduled for September. What was the music like at the barbecue event? What's going to happen at the, at the September? Well, event? we had, we had a, a few different, uh, acts, uh, at the, uh, the barbecue cook-off and there was, there was some, some good bands. Unfortunately, the, the headliner and all that was scheduled right when the storm was looking like it was going to come right over us. And, and it was so funny because Tracy Simpson's up there to kind of say, Hey, this is what we're going to do in a big lightning and thunder, you know, really set the stage for what he had to say. So we didn't, <laughs> we didn't end up having, uh, and I'm sure he played it. it well as he does. I know he, he, he did. And it, it, it worked out well. And unfortunately then it moved off in a different direction. Only until uh, later that night, we got the tornado watches and oh, wow. you know, first time I've ever really gone into my basement area <laughs> under the house to, with that one that went through mountain pine in here. But, uh, we've, uh, no, we've got, we're going to have a longer one, uh, as far as this, it's actually called the, uh, uh, the village fall home fest. And, uh, we've got it going from 10 to seven on September 24th. September now that's a busy 24th. day. I'm sorry. Um, Saturday, the 24th of September, there's going to be the village, uh, walk for cancer, um, research that oh, wow. morning early. Really? Um, I think the, you know, I know that the, um, Knights of Columbus were planning their Tootsie Roll donation thing. And yep. I think that's actually from what this is late breaking, but it looks like they're probably going to do it in our parking lot rather than at the gate of the village. Oh, wow. That's so, huge. I guess that's there was some huge. issues with them doing it for congestion and what have you yeah, at the gate. Yeah, so, yeah. so, um, um, so, I and think that's always gonna, a great fundraiser for a great cause, but it, it can get kind of congested at the gates. For those of you that don't know at each of the gates, when people pull up and stop and are waiting on the traffic light, they'll come up and sell a Tootsie Roll for whatever. And villagers are generous, generous people oh, without yeah. question. And it you goes know, you, for you, children advocacy. Sure. I mean, it's a great, great thing. Sure. So. You, you come up and say, Hey, we're, we're taking up for boys and girls club or whatever. You don't even have to give them a Tootsie Roll. I mean, they'll, you know, yeah. let me see what cash I got in my pocket, but this is, this is the fall fest basically. And it's September 24th from 10 to seven. I think I know the guy who's going to MC. What's his name? Uh, Simpson. Yeah. Simpson. Yes, Dennis. Simpson. Yeah. And it's a different Simpson than the one that did a the barbecue. Different cook Simpson at the 2.0, the, the, the second version of Simpson. Not related. Not so. related. Not related. <laughs> not that we know. Not that we know. <laughs> anyway, but I heard the lineup and I don't want to give it away, but uh, you know, you've got uh, the, the crystal chorus. Yeah, uh, you've got uh, go through it with me. And but there's there's one. At, well, is it not? Is it six well, or start, seven? The, 
Well, the music starts at 10. The music the starts morning, at 10. And we got Mike and Chloe followed by the crystal chimes. Now, let, let me interject real quick for those that you don't know. And, and if you don't want to know the details, you probably don't want to watch this show or listen to this show or any of our shows. But the details are Mike and Chloe, a young little girl, I guess she's she's a teenager or, or under 20. And then Mike, what's his name? Not Brewer, but what's his name? Um, oh, I wish I knew. Yeah, I'm, I'm blank. Anyway, I can they, tell play, you they were incredible at the barbecue. Well, here's the deal. They play at the turn, uh, the Balboa turn, the Balboa golf house. They play Tuesday nights or Thursday nights or something. And they are fantastic together. Oh, I mean, awesome. that, that, you, you know, and, and don't take this wrong. These people could be headliners. They're great, but I'm yeah. not even touching on what the headliner is because you have the best local band ever. I think yeah. who, who comes right after Mike and Chloe, it's the crystal. Well, we have the crystal, we have the crystal chimes, which they're delightful. I mean, they're just great, you know, uh, chorus. And then think, uh, think of, think of lady, ladies barbershop kind of thing. And, and yeah. very, very talented, very they talented. They're, they're very good. Then we then we're going to have a jalapeno eating contest after that. So mm. any of you uh, folks who are a little crazy and want to have a little <laughs> fun, uh, you can uh, come and enjoy the jalapeno eating contest. Then we're going to have the All America Cheer Dance Team, and they they were they were so sweet and so good. The, the young they were ages probably from five to I'm going to guess eleven, yeah. and they were out there doing uh, their their cheer dances at the barbecue cop. They'll be back because they were they were just they were great. How cool! A lot of fun. And I've always made note to people, and and this is in particularly true in the village. I've I've stood up in front of hundreds of thousands of people over time or, or on the video or radio or whatever. And I realize you, you, you have to understand the people on the other side of that microphone, they're rooting for you. And yeah. for these kids to see people going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the grandparents just clapping and whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it helps break down a lot of those performance issues. It, it helps make, it helps make radio DJs later on uh, in life. Right, Tracy? Well, it, yeah. It gives them confidence and it learning does. that confidence is just so key in life. So, yeah. I mean, great life lessons for these young, young girls. What was it? Uh, Les Brown, the, the American, uh, the uh, uh, black uh, professional speaker who I loved, but he one of his greatest quotes was, you know, self-improvement and self-esteem is a do-it-yourself project. Can nobody come along and give you an injection of self-esteem or self-confidence? Yeah. You got to do it yourself, you know? That's right. Anyway, next, what comes up next? Then we have the uh, apple pie eating contest sponsored by Artfully Baked and Brewed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that would be uh, a lot of fun. I think Alana will do a great job in yeah. putting that together. And uh, um, so uh, after that, we've got Jacob Lee Flores coming to play. And uh, I think he's a really talented guitarist and uh, singer. Yeah. And uh, then after that, we've got Kenny Mann in the danger zone. And I think they're uh, 1980s retro from what yep. I gather. I haven't heard. Well, of and, and what I needed to tell you, I mentioned this to Ron the other day, Kenny Mann's unfortunately ex drummer. And the reason he's an ex is because he got sick is actually the, uh, the, why, the husband of one of the ladies that Diane works with. And to say the least, we know Kenny Mann. We we're familiar with that band and, oh, good. and, and really talented local band. You'll really like their 80s stuff. But then who comes on as the headliner, my friend? Well, there's three great bands after that. So I don't know. Well, well, I, 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 I've got to give it away. I cannot wait to hear Bad Habit. Bad yeah, Habit well, is they, a bunch of... They, they, are, oh. they are the headliner. Oh, my it, God. Go, go ahead. Go back. Go back. They're second to last, but certainly don't want to miss Erica Jones and Brass Tax. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, from four to four forty-five, and then five to five forty-five, we got Bad Habit, and yeah, they are the headliner. And and, uh, and and let me explain to you. Imagine if you went to a local high school, and there were five incredibly talented musicians who loved '80s and '90s rock and could do Skinnerd and Kid Rock in the same sentence, and Foreigner, and Journey, and oh my God! And and these guys usually play at the Beehive. It is SRO at the Beehive. It is standing room only. They cannot, they can't squeeze people in. So for you to have bad habit coming up, man, that is a, that's a coup. Congratulations, my friend. And they were unfortunately the ones that got canceled by weather. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know. I, I wasn't so, here. I didn't know. I didn't all know. right. And, and then, and then it's finally the backbeats, uh, and then, uh, and then we shut down at seven, but uh, it's going to be a, a nice, fun, long day. And uh, 
we're excited to have as much of the community get out and uh, and and have fun in our uh, parking area. We'll have lots of seminars and other things going on inside the store, and you can learn, you know, a whole bunch of different things during that day from from the vendors and manufacturers that help you, support our store. And you mean like DIY things or what? Yeah, DIY things. will be inside the store towards the back there, so we'll have that published. Uh, on our, on our website and getting the word out on all the different things we'll be doing for the uh, seminars inside the store. And now uh, where's just, everybody going to park, Jeff? All right. Well, we're going to have parking across <laughs> the street <laughs> behind over Brooks beside Cranford's. And yeah. And yeah, yeah. Behind uh, Brookshire's there. And I know that, uh, um, I kind of got to remember the name of the church, but they are in the first assembly of God church will be oh, first uh, assembly. Yeah. Let's they've got their, first. their little, their, their train or whatever, and they're going to be bringing people across. And, oh, uh, really? So we'll be fitting par- people probably everywhere we need to. We'll probably have them back at our lumber yard area and we'll have them all over the place. And we're hoping we fill it that much. So, well, you know, here's the problem. Here's the problem. It's a problem having how many acres of parking you have and not having somebody once or twice a year, you need to fill that bad boy up, my friend. We do. It was nice to see it full in May and we're hoping to overfill it in September. <laughs> so. Well, honestly, and I know you got to run. I do too. Uh, Jeff, we're going to come back around to you if you don't mind. Do you, can you give a come back with us next month? I can. I absolutely can. We can uh, find some other great topics and uh, well, we need to firm up the plans for the, for the fall fest. Then this sounds awesome. It really does. No. And I appreciate uh, um, HSE inside out uh, doing what they do and uh, helping us get the word out uh, for such a great event. And hopefully we'll have a lot of the community out there and enjoying each other. Well, you never know. I I'm just kind of putting two and two together here, Jeff, you never know. There could be a couple of live streaming events from the, uh, from the, from the, I heard, I heard a rumor of that, but it hadn't been confirmed. So maybe you'll be able to help me confirm that. Maybe I know a tech who could help do that. Yeah, I think you might. <laughs> I think you would. Jeff, it's a pleasure again, as Thank always. You, Jeff Harrington, Hot Spring, or for Jeff Harrington with True Village, True Village, True Value, right there behind the Walgreens, uh, uh, just north of the Village Gate, the West Village Gate, and Hot Springs Village Inside Out. I'm Dennis Simpson, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hot Springs Village Inside Out a podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com, and tell a friend.